Hello and welcome to the latest video of the Radiologist YouTube account. Today we're going to look at how to assess the adequacy of a frontal chest x-ray. Now this is a really fundamental concept and it's only right we look at this in one of the early videos as without doing this it's really difficult to assess an x-ray accurately. So here we go. Cue dramatic intro. Assessing adequacy, I would say, is important in two areas. The first one is exams. Now, having examined medical school finals OSCEs, I know there are points when looking at a chest X-ray for being able to assess the adequacy of the X-ray. So it's really important to go through this in a systematic way. What's even more important is for real life. And this is something that I do in every chest X-ray that I look at. So let's have a look at a story of a young radiology SPR called, well, let's call him Jimmy. So Jimmy, for some reason, wears a stethoscope as a radiologist, which is a bit unusual, but I didn't say Jimmy was a normal guy. Now, one night, Jimmy was on a night shift and he was looking at a CT abdomen and pelvis. And what he found was this looked absolutely normal. So he reported the scan and went along his business and did the rest of his shift. Now the next morning, the radiology consultant has a look, has a look at the abdominal CT and sees there's a big stonking great perforation. Now, you may think Jimmy's not a very good radiologist. Well, the opposite is true. He's a fantastic radiologist. The problem was he pulled up the scan from 2017. This was the wrong scan. Now this story might seem a bit far-fetched, but it does happen. And what I really want to emphasize here is it's so important in real life and in your exams to make sure that you're looking at the right x-ray. So in your exam, there may well be points for checking the patient's name, date of birth, and it's the right date and time of the x-ray. And it's really important to do this in real life as well. Sometimes, for some reason, PACs can bring up the wrong film. So it has been heard of that people report the wrong x-ray or the wrong scan. And that can be catastrophic because there could be really important findings on the x-ray or scan that would therefore be missed. So if you're going to take one thing away from this video, it's this. It might sound really simple, but just make sure you're looking at the right x-ray. Once I've done that, I then move on to a mnemonic, RIPE-C. And this takes me through each part of the assessment systematically. So the first thing we'll look at is rotation. So the first thing you want to find is this, one of the spinous processes. So what is a spinous process? Well, let's have a look at an image of a CT. So we can see a vertebra here. And what the spinous process is, is a posterior projection from the vertebra. It's this part of the vertebra here. It's where the lamina join up and you can see this pretty well on a chest x-ray. And so that's what we can see here. Then try and find the medial clavicles, draw a line through the spinous processes and see if that line lies in the middle of the medial clavicles. In this case, it looks like we're just about okay. So I don't think there's any significant rotation on this film. Let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. So here's a patient with their back to the cassette and their front to the x-ray source and they are head on. So we can see the spinous processes are equidistant from the medial clavicles, but then the patient rotates forward to the right. So remember the convention is that the patient's right is actually what you can see on the left. So their right side has moved anteriorly here. It's moved forward. And what effect has that had on a potential X-ray? Well, we can see the spinous process is very much closer to the medial clavicle on the right on what would be the X-ray than the left. And that's because their right side had moved forward. Who cares? Is this important? Well, actually, yeah, it can have real serious implications when it comes to having a look at your x-ray because it means you can't adequately assess the mediastinum. The mediastinal contours then become unreliable. If you're doing a PA film, we'll come on to it in a moment, but you should be able to assess the heart size. Well, not really if there's significant rotation. And what might also happen is the lung on one side is closer to the x-ray than the other side 
and therefore you may overcall pathology in one lung rather than the other because those vessels aren't going to look equal on both sides. Moving on to inspiration. So there's a few ways to do this, but the way I do it is to look and see if there are six anterior ribs above the left hemidiaphragm. So which are the anterior ribs and which are the posterior ribs? Well, the posterior ribs are the ones you can see more clearly. So those are the ones that are more horizontal and the anterior ribs are more vertical. So I make a habit of counting one, two, three, four, five, six anterior ribs and make sure you can see those above the hemidiaphragm. If you can, then you've got an adequate inspiration. Again, what problems may you face if there's a suboptimal inspiration? Well, the vessels in the lung are all going to be a lot closer together and they're going to seem brighter than usual. So you may overcall an opacity in the lung. The other point to make is that it can be very difficult to tell whether you've just got a suboptimal inspiration or that's just what the patient looks like and whether the patient actually has reduced lung volumes. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now let's move on to projection. If you've ever had an x-ray or seen an x-ray being taken, then you'll know that usual practice is you walk in and you put your front to the x-ray cassette, your hands on either side will then go on your hips or you'll hug the cassette and the reason being is you want to try and bring the scapulae out of the way. The x-rays are then fired from an x-ray source and that's usually 180 centimeters away. This is what is known as a PA film because the x-rays are going from posterior to anterior and this is the standard way of doing things. However, that's not always possible. For example, in patients on ITU, these patients can't stand up. So what do they do? Well, we put an x-ray cassette below the patient and fire the x-rays through. So the x-rays are going anterior to posterior. This is an AP film. Now it's very difficult to get that standard distance of 180 centimeters, which means there is a different level of magnification here. So medial sinal structures and heart size now becomes unreliable. So you can't measure your cardiothoracic ratio on an AP film. And I'd be very cautious about making any estimate of heart size based purely on a single AP film because you can get caught out. So what's the best way to tell whether an x-ray is AP or PA? Well, the simplest and most reliable way is if there's a label saying AP or PA. That's going to be the easiest way. However, if that isn't there, one way you potentially could try and tell the difference is have a look at the scapulae. If the scapulae are out of the way of the lung, then it's quite probable that some attempt has been made to try and bring those scapulae out of the way. So you're probably looking at a PA film. If the scapulae are actually overlying the lung, then you're either looking at an AP film or you're looking at a PA film where the patient hasn't been able to bring their scapulae out of the way. In general, I think it's very good practice to try and trace the scapulae, to look for some kind of pathology, and also you don't want to mistake the scapulae for a pneumothorax or other kind of pathology. Moving on to E now and exposure. So the most important thing here, you want to be able to see the spaces between the vertebrae. If you can see those, then it's very likely that the film is adequately exposed or adequately penetrated is the other word that people use. Now, why is this important? If you can't see the vertebrae very clearly, then there's no way you're going to be able to comment on any pathology behind the heart. And this is a really important review area on a chest x-ray. So it's important to know from the offset whether or not you're able to do that. And lastly, moving on to coverage. So there are three things I look at to see whether there is adequate coverage of the film. Number one, look at the lung apex and the first rib. Number two, look to see if you've covered all of the lateral ribs. And number three, have we included the costophrenic angles? If we have, then we can say there is adequate coverage of the film. And again, this is something that comes up in medical school finals and other exams. So to recap, firstly, is it the right film that you're looking at? That's probably the most important bit. Secondly, is there any degree of rotation? Are the spinous processes equidistant from the medial clavicles? Is there an adequate inspiration? Can you see six anterior ribs above the left hemidiaphragm? What's the projection? Is it an AP? 
or a PA? Can you then comment on the heart size and the mediastinal structures? Is there adequate exposure? Can you see the vertebrae and the spaces between the vertebrae clearly? And is there adequate coverage? Can you see the apex, the lateral ribs and the costophrenic angles? Hopefully you found this video helpful. For the next video in the installment of this chest x-ray series, please do subscribe to the Radiologist YouTube account. If you found it helpful, please do leave a comment below. And for more, please subscribe. Thank you very much. Bye.